Hello, my name is Raluca Gaina. I am an Iki student from Queen Mary University of London and today we'll be talking about planning in real-time games with Rolling Horizon Evolution. Real-time games are a difficult domain for planning methods due to the very limited time in every game step to make decisions. Most modern games run at an average of 60 frames per second, hardware dependent of course, but 16 milliseconds per frame or game tick. If it is a game of quick reactions, those 16 milliseconds of thinking time can make the difference between winning and losing the game. What can an AI agent do in 16 milliseconds? In the general video game AI framework, Monte Carlo Research can perform an average of 12 iterations with a rollout depth of 10, although this is highly game specific. An evolutionary algorithm can evaluate an average of 6 individuals, representing sequences of actions of length 10. That is not a lot. So how can we get the best performance in this situation? Incorporating domain knowledge is an easy approach. If you tell the agent what to look for, it will get there much faster than one that has to figure it out itself. However, this opens another problem. Once this agent is able to solve this one problem that it was programmed for, it would require severe modifications to be adapted to another problem. And that is another task that I am interested in, achieving general intelligence, which would be a matter of creating an AI agent able to solve any new problem it is faced with, even if it hasn't seen it before. If you're doing this in real-time games, then we're referring to the domain of general video game playing. The general video game AI competition that I am involved in as the organizer for the two-player planning track provides a framework for testing such general agents on various problems over 160 games currently, and also in different contexts, including planning, learning, and procedural content generation, level and rule generation. The agents receive a number of games for training and are testing on new unknown games for test. These ranging from shooters to puzzles to adventure games, all in 2D so far. The rest of this talk, however, will be focused on the single player planning problem in which they have 40 milliseconds thinking time in every game tick, the equivalent of a 25 frames per second game. The only information agents receive about the game is a broad description of the current game tick. Having no access to the game rules, this means that they have to find out how to win the game. Let's see a quick example of the type of information AI agents receive. If you look again at the Space Invaders type game I had on the introduction slide, this is what I would know about it if I was an AI agent. I know that I am the red diamond, that I can move left, right and shoot. If I do shoot, I spawn objects that move straight up. So far, I've also discovered that if I hit one of the green circles with the object I spawn, both my triangle and the green circle disappear, and I also get one point. I know that the green circles don't move, that there are objects moving straight down and some that move to the right and keep spawning in the top left corner. I know my current score is 1 and that I have been playing the game for 88 ticks. Essentially, I don't know that I'm playing the Space Invaders. I have to figure out that by creating triangles that move up which then collide with the objects at the top of the screen, or shooting them in human terms, I can get rid of all those objects and win the game. A method typically used in this scenario, and the most successful so far, is Monte Carlo Research, but I won't cover that in this talk, instead focusing on a different algorithm which has the potential of being even better, the Rolling Horizon Evolutionary Algorithm. This algorithm starts with a population, randomly initialized, in its vanilla version. We then take two of the individuals for a crossover, where each individual represents a sequence of actions to play in the game, starting from the current game tick. Then we perform a uniform crossover of these two individuals to obtain a new one. We mutate this new individual 
by selecting one action at random and replacing it with a new random action. And we evaluate this individual by going through the actions in the sequence in turn and simulating with the four model what would happen if we actually played that action. So we go through all of the actions in turn and we will have one final state that we reach. This state we evaluate with a heuristic and the value of the state will become the fitness of our individual. This process is repeated for all the individuals in the population, except for the first one, which is promoted directly through elitism. At the end of the evolutionary process, after a number of generations, we select the first action of the best individual in the population as the action to actually play in the game, and then we repeat the process at the next game step. And this is what it looks like if we get the vanilla version of this algorithm, so exactly as described before, to play the Space Invaders game. We are using here a population of 5 individuals and an action sequence length of 10. Pretty good, right? What if you play a more difficult game? with the same algorithm and configuration. It seems to be struggling a bit now and losing the game. But there are a lot of things that can be done with this algorithm. There are many parts to the algorithm, all of which could be modified in various ways to obtain a different and better performance. These are a few things that we have tried so far. First, population size versus individual length seems like a good place to start. There is a trade-off there between the number of sequences we're seeing and evaluating and the look ahead the algorithm gets, so a nice balance must be found. A parameter tuning algorithm would work great, and unlike tuning even more so, but special regards to the limited budget should be paid in this case. However, we started with a grid search, looking through increasingly higher parameter values. What we found was that the highest values possible essentially turning the algorithm into a random search with only a random sampling of action sequences and no evolution, performed the best, a slightly disappointing result, but it was still better than Monte Carlo's research. We looked at what happened if we tried to reduce the search space through simple macro actions, which in this case were just repeating the same action multiple times. Although this worked better than the vanilla algorithm, it was still not good enough. So we tried to start our evolution from a better point than just random through population seeding. We tried two different methods to generate our initial sequences, a one-step look ahead and Monte Carlo tree search, using half the budget to provide this initial solution. The Monte Carlo tree search seeding did work great, but only in small population sizes and individual lengths and it decreased performance in several games. It was clear that the evolution process needed some improvements. So we looked at four different parts in the algorithm and used methods from literature to see if they work in this domain and if they work together. The UCP-based mutation failed in this case, as the bandit system we used did not account for the connection between the actions in the sequence and how their meaning would change once one action in the sequence was changed. The best method that came out of this study was using a shift buffer to keep the population we evolved during one tick and continue evolution from that point in the next one, while adding Monte Carlo rollouts at the end of the individual when evaluating it in order to dynamically increase its length. This performed better than Monte Carlo research and matched its generality as well. This is one example of the improved version using the shift buffer and Monte Carlo rollouts for individual evaluation playing the same missile command game. It seems to be doing very well in the beginning, although it fails to find the last missile that it's supposed to catch. However, it still wins the game now. One thing that is apparent through all of my experiments is that Rhea is not able to explore the search space effectively enough, 
and it appears to converge to an OK solution fairly quickly. So my current work is focused on obtaining a more diverse population during the search. However, we can look at this in two ways. At genotype level, obtaining individuals with different genes, or at phenotype level, obtaining individuals with different behavior. For example, let's take these three individuals I have drawn here. If we look at the first two, they are very different to each other. They contain completely different actions and don't respect the same sequence structure either. But if the agent performs either one of those sequences, it will end up in the exact same place where it was to start with. So this doesn't give us much in terms of diversity. If we look at the third individual, that one is not so different in terms of genes. It copies them alternatively from the other two individuals. When the agent performs this sequence, however, it will end up two spaces to the right. And that's a lot better. However, finding phenotypic diversity is more challenging. So I have started by looking at genotypic diversity. And I am testing if this actually does have an impact on performance in GVGI games. Some preliminary results indicate there is nothing satisfactory obtained just yet. Most of the results are pretty similar to the previous best rare version. However, there is some variance in certain games. It seems to be performing worse in exploratory games, due to the exact example I showcased here, but better in puzzle games where the exact sequence of action matters, so looking at simply different sequences is a good thing. The problem is that most games do require better exploration in game state space, so phenotypic diversity is expected to produce much better results. For example, this is one type of exploratory game. The goal here is to collect all of the butterflies, so one has to explore the level and find all the butterflies first. At some point the agent will realize there is another half of the level that it hasn't seen yet. There we go. And now it can collect all of the butterflies. Or most of them. And this is a puzzle game, where the boxes have to be pushed around in the right order to make it to the exit. And although the algorithm is struggling a bit in the beginning, it manages to make its way fairly quickly to the end. To conclude, General video game playing is a difficult problem due to two things. The lack of domain knowledge available to the agents, as they need to be transferable between problems with minimal tweaking, and the fact that real-time games have a very limited thinking time, so we need the process of coming up with intelligent decisions to be as effective as possible in a short time span. And rolling horizon evolution can work, and there are many more things to try to do to improve it. Some of these are parameter optimization, population diversity, which is what I'm focused on at the moment, multi-objective optimization, some more complex macro actions than simply repeating the same action, which would be very useful in puzzle games, where we could define things such as push the box into the hole and different mutation operators and crossover techniques for individuals as sequences. Thank you for your attention. If you would like to know more about my work, you can check out my website or feel free to email me with any questions you might have.